In this video we're going to talk about the derivative of the hyperbolic secant function now. So d dx of hyperbolic secant of x is equal to negative hyperbolic secant of x times the hyperbolic tangent of x. Okay? So um, just like in the last video, uh, I want to write down some stuff and show you that there are a bunch of different ways that we can go about doing this, but we're only going to do it one way. Um, so here, uh, let's go ahead and uh, start with this. d dx of hyperbolic secant of x. So hyperbolic secant of x, um, that is 1 over hyperbolic cosine. Okay, um, so we could do it like that, or we could do it like in the last video when we said, uh, remember the last video we did this to the negative first power uh, and then did the chain rule, we could do it like that, or we could do this uh, in terms of the exponential functions. So um, remember cosh of x, uh, cosh of x is e to the x plus e to the negative x all over 2, right? So hyperbolic secant is going to be 1 over this, which means we just take this and flip it, okay? Um, so that would be the same thing as saying d dx of 2 over e to the x plus e to the negative x. So if we want, we could do a quotient rule on that, and that actually probably wouldn't be too bad. Um, let's not do that. Maybe we'll do that in the next video for hyperbolic cosecant. But anyway, um, in the last video we did chain rule um, with hyperbolic cotangent, uh, so let's not do it again. Um, but instead, let's do quotient rule on this. So we have done something like that before, but it's been a while, um, and it's probably good to see it again. So uh, what I'm talking about is in the last video, we did something like this with the different functions, of course. All right, so we could do something like that, and we could do uh, the chain rule again. Um, but let's not, go, let's not do that. So we did that in the last video. So let's do uh, quotient rule on this instead. Okay. So if you want to do quotient rule on that, um, what's that going to be? That's going to be bottom, okay, that's the bottom, times the derivative of the top. The top is just 1, just a constant, so its derivative is 0, all right? And then we have minus the top, which is just 1, uh, times the derivative of the bottom. The bottom is cosh of x. We already know its derivative is sinh of x. All right, so we have all that. Um, and then that's all being divided by the bottom squared now. So divided by cosh squared of x. Okay? So that's what we've got so far. So now um, let's simplify this. Cosh x times 0, that just zeroes out, so there's nothing left there. Then we have negative 1 times sin of x. So this equals uh, negative, we'll pull the negative off. And then what we have left is uh, sin of x over cosh squared of x. All right. So um, let's uh, pause for a minute here and look back up here. If we did the chain rule on this, so I erased it, but let's write it again real quick. Um, d dx of cosh of x to the negative first, like that. Um, if we did the chain rule on this, we would end up with negative 1 times cosh of x to the negative second times sinh of x. Okay, that's what the chain rule would give us. And that could be rewritten just like this. All right, so we're going to end up in the same place. Right, now we're not done yet, but uh, if we did the chain rule on this instead, we'd eventually be here anyway. So, uh, kind of different ways of doing the exact same thing, it's going to get us to the same place. Uh, I just wanted to point that out. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and continue with this now. So, let's see. Um, cosh squared of x, that's just cosh x times cosh x, right? So let's go ahead and rewrite this uh, like this. Negative 1 over cosh of x times sinh x over cosh x, okay? So uh, see how these are the same thing here. So we have the minus sign here and the minus sign here, and then on the bottom is cosh squared. Okay, cosh times cosh gives us cosh squared, and on the top is just a 1 times sinh, which is the same thing as sinh. Okay, so these two things are the same thing here. Um, and now notice uh, negative 1 over cosh, that's negative hyperbolic secant, and then here, sinh over cosh is just tang, or hyperbolic tangent of x. All right, so uh, that pretty much completes the proof um, of the derivative of the hyperbolic secant function there.